Welcome to uh, the first year. This is considered the prologue lion for Kingdom Death Monster. Uh, this is the White Lion's uh, deck card, the AI card. Like the, the, the first card, as you see at the top, it's a custom deck for uh, the White Lion in the prologue story. So here, I'm just going to shuffle up the hit location deck. Um, and then the top card is always going to be Strange Hand. Um, now I've played Kingdom Death uh, many campaigns. Uh, three all the way. Well, not all the way. Three to their conclusions. I've died in um, Sunstalker and once in a regular People of the Lantern. And I have completed uh, People of the Lantern in 1.5, so that includes um, beating the Gold Smoke Knight. I have completed uh, all the years for him. Uh, and then same with the AI deck, I shuffled it. Now we're going to put Claw on the top. Um, so, I'm not going to pretend that I don't know what's on top of the hit location deck. <laughs> so we will exploit that to get the plus one strength. So, um, as we can see, White Lion's going to have a six, tu six toughness and a six movement for the prologue. Place the basic action here or here. Um, so, King of Death, the monster always moves first. Um, so he's going to start. We will draw the first monster card. We already know what the AR card is going to be. It's going to be the Claw, which... So as you play King of Death, you always move for the pick target, goes first. And you always do the uh, in chronological order. So the first one, second one, the third one. So first he's going to look for the closest threat facing in range. And uh, threat is considered any survivor that is in the field of view. And the field of view is... Oh, and not, and not knocked down. Uh, there's some other things that can make it so you're not a threat. But those are the majority of it. You're not knocked down and you're in, you're in the field of view. The field of view for a monster is everything but the two spots directly behind it. So um, all four of these are targeted right now for Claw. So the way it works is you control which uh, monster he's going to attack. So as monster controller, I will be attacking him. So we will name our four survivors right now to give them their one survival. Uh, when you name a survive, when you name a survivor, you automatically get one survival for doing so. So we will name him Archer. This is Archer. This will be Sid. This will be uh, Zoe, and this will be Lara. All right, so then the White Lion will target Archer. The White Lion has a six movement, one, two, three, four, five. You do not count diagonals um, as one square. You cannot move diagonally at all in Kingdom Death. So whenever you count out a square, you always have to count uh, orthogonally, just this way. That, you know. So now he will attack. We will look at the card. We'll go down to the dice box over here. So then on uh, AI card, you have this break symbol here where you can spend survival to do something if it is not your turn. Um, we will not be spending survival. Now that we've named all of our survivors, everybody has one survival. The only survival thing we have available to us is dodge, and dodge allows you to cancel one hit of your choice after wounds are rolled, um, meaning you roll, or after wound locations are rolled. So once you roll the wound location, you can then spend your dodge and cancel one of them. All right. Now, uh, so the way attacking works in King Death Monster is you will roll a d10, first to hit, then to wound. Um, it's much like Warhammer. I played Warhammer a long time ago. I'm, I'm pretty sure Warhammer, you, you used to do that. You roll a d6 first to hit, then you roll a d6 to wound. So, and then you use your strength and stuff the same way as Warhammer. So with speed means we will be rolling two d10s, and then what we need to hit is a two plus, and then you also factor in 
the evasion of a survivor. So the, or well, not just any survey, uh, evasion. So um, it's accuracy, which is a two plus, and then if there's evasion, you increase the number by the evasion. So none of our survivors have any evasion, so we will be rolling two dice. Let me get this out of the dice box. It's a four and a three. That will be two hits. I'll put this now each, oh, I'll bring this back up. So then you can see the damage is one. What damage is, is each hit does damage. So if the damage was two, this would actually be one da or two damage, two damage. So it's not um, one damage per hit, it's the number of damage per hit. So this will do one damage and then this will do one damage. Now as I said, we will roll the wound dice, or the hit location dice, which will be a body and a foot to Archer. Um, now, every survivor starts with the um, loincloth, which gives one armor to the waist location. So all of these survivors have one armor in their waist location. Now, however, this was body and foot, so we will have to take one damage in each of those locations. Now is when I could have dodged had I wanted to, but I do not want to. Um, so as the way that damage works in Kingdom Death is you have your armor in each location, then once all your armor is expended in that location, you then can take a light wound in that location and then take a heavy wound in that location. And then every subsequent hit to the location that already has a heavy wound will continue to be another heavy wound. And you do not want to be rolling on the heavy wound chart because you will be dying. More likely than not. Even the best result on the heavy wound location is not good. You don't die, but it's still not good. So, with that said, we will go ahead and mark on Archer that he has a light body wound and a light foot or leg wound. Okay. Now, with that said, that is the end of the monster's turn. Now it will go to the survivor's turn. Uh, the survivors... Uh, oh, and for targeting Archer, he gets one insanity. I forgot to mention that. So he gets one insanity for targeting himself. Now, the next phase is the survivor phase. So in the survivor phase, all four survivors will go before the end of that phase. You can choose whatever order you want, but each survivor can only go once. So, with that said, um, each survivor is using a founding stone. They all have a founding stone for their weapon right now. Much like the monster, you read weapons with the top number, or the top symbol shows that it requires one action. It's an action to use. That's the uh, little lightning bolt there. So it requires one action to use, uh, or activation. So um, you spend your activation to attack with this weapon. Then next comes the speed, much like the monster. Speed represents the number of dice that you will roll. Then it is your accuracy is the third one. So this is an accuracy of seven plus. Now um, you can also spend, or you also add your accuracy from the survivor to your hit uh, dice. If you have any, these survivors have no accuracy. And then third, the third number is the strength of the weapon that is on the wound roll. Monsters do not roll a wound once they hit, it automatically does damage. So uh, the wounding roll I will show you after Zoe goes. So with Zoe here, 
she um, will be throwing this founding stone. As you can see at the bottom, you can also spend an activation uh, to shoot from anywhere on the board, and then you archive this, and it automatically scores a automatic critical hit. So we will be doing that. We're just going to spend this. Archiving means you just return it to the box. Uh, it does not return with your survivors. It is gone. So she will just throw it. We're actually going to move. We're going to move here. We'll move right here. Yeah, this will be good. We'll move right here. Throw it from here. It will, when you wound, so normally an attack would go, you'd roll your dice. I'll do it up here. You'd roll your dice. You'd check to see if you hit. Then the number of hits, you draw hit cards representing each hit. Then you'd choose which ones you want to do, unless there's a first strike. And I'll get into that later when there is one. Then you'd choose and you'd roll two hit or two wound rolls for each of those locations. Each of the cards, I mean. And then whether or not you actually did wound, you'd do a damage. So with the spe founding stone special, we throw. We hit automatically, don't have to roll for it. We draw the AI card, which is the strange hand. And it automatically scores a critical hit. So the critical hit would be right here where it says it is able to be critical wounded. And this symbol, the lantern symbol, is the D10 symbol on the dice. So that just means a 10. You can critical wound any other ways. There's, you can might roll nines, eights with luck. But we'll get into all that. So uh, you hack off the monster's hand. Spend one survival to treasure this moment and gain plus one permanent strength. And then this is also a persistent injury of the lost hand, and it affects some AI cards. So with this, we will pick this up. We'll go ahead, we'll keep that in play over here. Now we will resolve the wound by removing one AI card from the AI stack, placing it in the wound stack. Um, we have now done one wound to the monster. As you can see here, with Claw already in the discard pile, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. That means, uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven with Claw, eight with the wound that we just took off, nine wounds to totally kill the monster. Uh, after the AI stack is depleted, you have to do one more damage to kill the monster. So that means he has eight hits left until he is dead. Now we will spend the survival from that to Cherish. So, um, when I say Laura, she will spend the survival. She now has no survival left, but she has plus one permanent strength. And that is Laura's turn. Now we will move with Sid, who we said was this. One, two, three, four, five. He will move behind the white line, and he will go ahead and attack with the Founding Stone. Now, unlike last time when we threw it, this time we're going to just attack with it. So it is a 2-speed, meaning a 7+, plus, plus any accuracy, which we don't have. And then we will see how many we get. So accuracy of 7+, plus, we get a plus 1 accuracy for being in the blind spot of the monster. So that makes this a 3 and that a 5. That is not a 7 plus, so that is two misses. Next, we will move one, two, three spaces. We have five movement with each survivor. I forgot to mention that. So each survivor can move five spaces. That cost us three spaces. We will now attack again with the Founding Stone. This will be Zoe. She attacks in the blind spot, which gives us a plus one accuracy. We will roll two speed, which is a eight. That is the one hit. This would be a five. This is not a hit. Now, for the one hit, we will draw the top hit location card. It is the Beast's Maw. We will now roll to Wound. She does not have any additional strength. This has a plus one strength for the Founding Stone. With the plus one strength, here we go, it is a five. Plus one strength makes it a six. He has a six toughness. Um, I will get the card. So here is the 
six toughness from the white lion. That means we did in fact wound him. Now before we resolve the wound, we go back and we check the card. The reaction is on a failure. However, we did successfully wound him. So this does not resolve. We also did not critical, so this does not resolve. So the card goes in the discard pile of the hit location deck. We remove the top card of the AI. We have now done two damage to the white lion. Next, we will go with Archer. He will move here. He will, again, attack with the Founding Stone. I'm not going to show. We're going to start speeding up now. So the Founding Stone is two dice. That's a seven accuracy. It does hit on a seven plus. This is not a hit. So we did roll one hit. Now we will draw the top card of the wound location, or the hit location. All right. And now we will roll to hit. So he has no additional strength, just the one strength from the weapon. So White Lion has toughness six. We need a five to hit. Eight is a wound. So this has another reaction and a failure. Does not resolve. That is a wound. Again, we put that in the discard pile and we take the top card of the AI deck. All right, that leaves us with no survivors left to activate. It is now the monster's turn. So the monster will draw the top card of the AI deck, which is size up randomly. Uh, it's a random threat in the field of view. So there's only two people who are in uh, this. Notice this does not say uh, in range. So this is just anyone, even though I actually think one, two, three, four, five, everyone was in range. So now these two are not in the field of view, so it's going to be a 50-50 here between these two. We will roll the 50-50. Um, one, one, two, three, four, or five. Six, seven, eight, nine, or ten. So we are going to be targeting Archer. All right. That now I could spend my survival, but there's nothing I can do. Then the monster stares, uh, stares down its prey. Turn to face target and roll on a d10. So we will turn to face the target. Oh, whoops. Okay, on a roll of a four plus, which we did, the target suffers one brain damage per monster level and is knocked down. All right, so per monster level right now is the prologue lion. It's still a level one lion, so he will uh, suffer one brain damage from this. Now we take this, put this in the discard pile. So... Luckily, that was Archer, who we did target last round as well, and we gave him one insanity when we targeted him ourselves. So when you take brain damage, your defense is considered your insanity. So luckily, he had one insanity, so he had a shield against that, so now he has zero insanity, and then he is knocked down. Now, when you knock down survivors, stand at the beginning of the next uh, monster phase. So he will be knocked down throughout the entire survival, our survivor turn. So, all right, it's at the end. My bad, I said the start. It's, it's at the end. Now, so that will be Archer. We will not be able to get him up, unfortunately. We do not have the means to do so. There are means to make uh, knockdown survivors stand, but we do not have access to that right now. So, let's start our survivor phase with uh, Lara. She will move her five, which is one, two, three, four, five, to get here. Now, remember, she threw her founding stone, so she no longer has access to it. However, she does have her fist and tooth, which... Fist and Tooth is shown here. So Fist and Tooth 
has a speed of 2, like the Founding Stone. The accuracy is a 8 plus, and it has 0 strength. However, it is deadly when you attack uh, with your fists and teeth, or any deadly weapon. When you attack with deadly any deadly weapon, you get plus 1 luck. Luck determines your uh, critical threat range. Um, so it means normally you crit only on a 10, but you add luck to that and it brings it down. So when you attack with fist and tooth, you crit on a 9 or a 10. So she will be attacking with her fist and tooth, meaning we will roll two dice. Um, we get one for being in the blind spot. However, the accuracy is an 8+, plus, so this is a 3 and this is a 6. Neither of those hit. All right, Laura. Now we will move with Sid. One, two, three, four, five. Sid will go there. Sid will also attack in the blind spot. However, he will attack again with his Founding Stone, which is the two speed. That is two hits. All right, a nine and an eight. Two hits, very good. Now we draw the top two cards. Um, we have the Straining Neck and the Beast's Femur. We will look at these really quick. Neither of these oops, have the keyword for strike, so I can choose which one it is that I would like to do first. Neither of these have reactions, so these are great. Um, we will resolve the Beast Femur first. Here we go. Now, strength of one, meaning with a toughness six, we need a five to wound. It's a critical failure. So this, nothing happens. We fail to wound. Goes to the discard pile. Now we will do the neck. Again, failed to wound. That is really bad. <laughs> really bad. No wonder why uh, you are terrible, Sid. <laughs> that was really bad. All right. Now we will just attack with, uh, what's her name? Uh, Liliana. Um, why did I, what? Her name is Liliana. I don't know why I said Zoe before. Whatever, her name is Liliana. All right. Oh, I see. This is a old old um, character sheet. Yes, like I said, I've played other campaigns where some people just die. You make a character sheet for them. I've learned better. So the first time I played through this game, I actually made character sheets for my whole settlement, which was wrong because some of those people just die instantaneously at random. So I had grabbed a sheet. I guess I had already written down someone's name. I already said now. So uh, her name is Liliana. So let's attack with her. Hopefully she'll do better this time. Oh, she wounded last time. So again, Founding Stone, two dice. Terrible. Four and a three. Okay, monster turn. We draw the top card of the AI. Maul, this is really bad. <laughs> I already know. I've played this game enough. Maul is really bad for us right now. All right. So, Victim of Grab. There was no Victim of Grab last round. However, there was the closest knockdown survivor in range, which is right in front of him. That is who he will attack. It is a speed two. Uh, I'm just going to say Archer is probably about to die. So, uh, this is really bad. Okay, Archer is going to die. This is probably really bad. Uh, so he's knocked down already as well. When he is knocked down, they cannot uh, do... Well, they can spend survival to dodge, but can't spend survival to do anything else. That is two hits. Each one of these is going to do three damage. Uh, let's just see. We're going to be rolling. Okay, so we will dodge the hand that we're spending our one survival to dodge the hand, but we're going to be crit rolling on the waist. So the reason why we're only going to crit roll one, or uh, uh, severe table 
once on the um, is because we had that uh, one armor in the waist. So that is good for us. Um, severe injury. Sorry, I have to grab the severe injury table. Usually this isn't a problem, but I guess for this one it's going to be a problem. Okay, so we have severe injury on the waist. Didn't even really need the table. I should have rolled first. Okay, so we'll take three damage to the waist. One from the armor, then one from the light wound, now one for the heavy. That's three. Oh, two. He's dead. Shouldn't even bother. I mean, I know he's dead. Severe injury waste. One or two. Final breath. With your last gasp, you utter final words of bravery. Adjacent survivors gain plus one survival. No one is adjacent to him. He is just dead. Awesome. So Archer is dead. Okay. That's that's just that. Okay, dead. Fun. All right. That is really bad. Um That is really bad. All right. So, uh it is now he would have stood up now at the end of the next monster turn. Doesn't matter. He's dead. So, we will attack with Laura, like I said. She has the plus 1 uh, strength. Now you can do uh, your actions however you wish. You can spend your uh, activation to do an attack or whatever, however you want to spend your activation, and then you can move. You don't need to spend your move and then activate. You can activate then move. So we, in this case we will activate to attack with the fist and tooth. This is going to be a one because we are still in the blind spot, so it gets a plus one. Uh, it is going to be an 8, so we did hit with the Fist and Tooth, which is great. We will draw the top hit location. I'm fully expecting to be drawing a trap now. This is the worst prologue ever. There is no reaction on this, which is great. We will roll our two wound. Uh, she has a plus one strength. We just need... Okay. Um, that is a 4. That is not going to wound. We needed a 5. So that does not wound. Okay, now she will move her one, two, three, four, five to here. Next, uh, Founding Stone from Sid. He gets a plus one. Founding Stone hits on a seven, it will hit on a six plus. One wound, we draw the top hit location card. I'm fully expecting traps, because this is going really badly. All right, great, this one has a failure. Great, we will Hopefully wound. Strength of one in the spawning stone. We just need a five plus. That is a crit fail. All right, awesome. We are going to fail. Full move monster forward in a straight line. One, two, three, four, five, six. Awesome. One, two, three, four, five. Great. Actually, we can still get behind the monster here with uh, Liliana. He actually still has his move. One, two, three, four, five. He's going to go here. So Liliana is going now to attack. This is just going swimmingly. Let's just get this over with. Those are both misses. This is going great. Okay. All right. Monster's turn. All right. Let's just... Turn him around, because I'm pretty sure he's going this way. Let's draw the next AI card. Closest knockdown survivor in range. There are none. Closest survivor in range. I just turned him. He's going to be attacking Liliana. Attack. Speed 1. Accuracy 2+. plus. That's obviously a hit. Damage 1. Now this does something special after damage. Come on, waste. Hands. Great. So, uh, the white lion isolates its prey. Full move the white lion away from all threats. Okay, so it's going to do, so it's going to do one damage to the hand and one damage to the legs and then knock down the survivor. So it's full move away. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And knock down here. Great. Just, this is just. This is just going so great. So she's going to take one to the hands. 
<sighs> one to the hands and one to the feet. Great. This is just, this is going so great. Okay, Monster's, oh, that was Monster's turn. Survivor's turn. It's not going to be a very good one. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Monster's turn. All non-deaf survivors, that's everyone. So, roll d10 per target. So, let's go Liliana first, knock down. She has a nine. Um, brain damage, awesome. So, Liliana. Okay, let's just see if everybody, everybody is going to suffer brain trauma. This is just going great. So for brain trauma, we will roll for everyone. First, Liliana, brain trauma, eight. On a roll of an eight, lunacy, gain a random disorder, and one d5 insanity. Uh, I don't even have the disorder cards out. <laughs> this normally doesn't happen, okay. I'll have to get the disorder cards. So, but Lillian is gaining five insanity. So that's good. Um, let's just, let's just roll for Sid. See what happens. Oh, great. A one. No ifs, ands, or buts. You are dead from mortal terror. Awesome. So Sid is now also dead. This is, again, this is just going so great. Let's just roll for... Lara, a four. You are knocked down and suffer knocked down. E um, okay, so she's going to be knocked down and then just run away. I guess she turns to flee and falls now. One, two, three, four, five. She will just move there and be knocked down. She also suffers knockback equal to her movement. Okay. 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 This is just going so well. Uh, I have to shuffle the AI deck now because I ran out of cards. So I don't think this is going to matter. But I think this is just over, but we will see. We shall see. Uh, I need to go get the disorders. Uh, they're just right here. I'm just going to grab one right out of the deck really quick. What random disorder? Uh, disorders, great. What did you get here? You're getting this one, whatever it is. Oh man, whatever. I don't care. So I will, I have most of the expansions. I do not have the Lonely Tree or the Slenderman expansions. And I just grabbed randomly out of the box. So I guess we're going to play with the Gorm. Didn't want to do that, but that's okay. So I just accidentally drew this. Uh, no one knows where your mind goes when you are gone, not even you. The first time you would suffer a brain trauma each showdown, you are instead knocked down and for... <laughs> Ugh, and you forget a fighting art. Okay, absent seizures disorder for Liliana. That is is that is just great. Um... I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep this card on right now. I mean this is just going so bad. Okay. It was the end of the monster's turn. She now stands up. One, two, three, four, five. She's gonna go behind here. Hey, let's draw the trap and just end this. Okay, here we go. She'll attack with her bounding stone. That's two. One hit. Hit location. Beast's ear. Okay, this has a failure, so obviously this is bad. Seven plus accuracy from the blind spot is one. Ah, we actually hit, so we didn't fail. Discard the top card from the AI deck. Awesome, we only have five more hits to go. Great, five more hits to go. Okay.
Um, oh, right. Monster's turn. Let's see what's horrible card since I reshuffled. Grasp again. Closest knockdown survivor. Okay, closest survivor in range. So... He's going to turn. Okay. Speed. Uh, well, closest knockdown survivor in range. Yeah, so she's not in range. That's what I thought. Okay. This is not that bad. This is speed one. Oh, that's obviously a hit. So she's going to take one damage. She will come on waste. Oh, that's the only thing that's been good. Liliana, you will take that one waste. Awesome. Just awesome. It's not bad. And the next monster tank, she stands up. One, two, three, four, five. We'll just get behind here again. Here we go. Rolling two accuracy. Uh, it's a hit. No, it's not. That's a miss. So, two misses. One, two, three. Wait, one, two, three, four, five. Monster's turn. Whoop. Victim of grab last round. There was no closest knockdown survivor in range. There is no closest knockdown survivor in range. So I guess we sniff because... Wait a minute. Victim of grab last round. There was no victim of grab last round. Closest knockdown survivor in range. There is no knockdown survivors. So yeah, I guess we're going to sniff. Um, all right, that seems, well, this is really lucky. So let's do sniff. Uh, so he's gonna end his turn. Till the end of the next round, all survivors are now threats. Okay. It's fine, they already all were threats, whatever. That's great. Um, all right, let's go. Liliana, one hit. Top of the hit location. Beast's chest, five plus. Of course, two, failure, okay. Full move monster forward in a straight line. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is going to go here. It's perfect. Perfect. This is one, two, three, four, five. This is just so perfect. All right. Oh, man. All non death survivors, so that's everybody. Okay, Liliana's first. She's going to suffer one brain, but she already has five insanity from last time, so she's still good. She's now at four insanity. And, uh, what was it, Lara just didn't gain any, she just got knocked back, or did she gain some? Uh, I can't remember now if she, she was supposed to gain 1d5 insanity. My fault, so she gained two insanity. So she's going to probably take one now. She did. She's down to one insanity. Okay. That's not that bad. Um, I'll just double check with the lunacy. Uh, she was supposed to only gain 1d5 insanity. I have a feeling I rolled put 5. So we're just going to say that I made a mistake and that was it. I mean, I know I made a mistake because it was only supposed to be 1d5 insanity. I rolled and probably wrote 5. So if that's the case, I'm just going to say I was only supposed to gain 2 instead of 5 insanity. So she would have been brought down from 2 to 1. So she is also now only at 1 insanity. Okay. I'm just Even if that's wrong, then I'll just... I mean, these guys are probably dead anyway. Whatever. Um, okay. Survivor's turn. One, two, three, four, five. She can attack from the side. Two speed. Seven plus. Terrible. One, two, three, four. No. One, two, three, four, five. She, no, one, two, three, four, five. 
she'll go here because she cannot get close enough. Okay, monster's turn. AI card. Random threat in field of view. 1 to 5, 6 to 10, 9. Doesn't really even have to move. Okay. Uh, stands out as prey. Turn to face, roll d10. Yep, 4 plus. Target suffers 1 brain damage. Okay. She's down to 0. She has no insanity again. And I don't have any way of me letting, letting me pick targets. So far it looks like everything I'm drawing is just going to be a random target. Okay, I'm out of AI cards. Let's shuffle up again. All right. Let's go here. Oh, great. Now I can't even get in the blind spot. One, two, three. We're going to go here and hope maybe he runs forward if I hit. But I don't think Liliana can hit anything. Oh, wait. Absent seizure. First time you would suffer brain trauma each showdown. All right. She didn't suffer brain trauma. Okay. She actually hit. One hit. Let's draw the top hit location card. Come on, trap. Just waiting for it. All right. Okay, Doki. That is a wound. Because it's toughness six, five. My only strength is toughness of one. Our strength of one makes it a six. Did not fail. He would have run forward, so that was actually clever of me to do that. Because he would have moved him into range with her. Could have Then uh, Laura could have got behind him. Good prediction by me. But I'd rather the wound than to worry about getting in the blind spot. So that is one more wound. Let's hope I get rid of Terrifying Roar. That would be great. Okay. One, two, three, four. Fist and Tooth. Eight plus. Oh my gosh, I actually hit. Eight plus with a Fist and Tooth drawing a card. Oh, this one has a reaction and a wound. Come on, crit. I crit on a nine or a ten and I hit on a five. Oh, are you kidding? I missed. Well, at least the reaction was a wound reaction. So, a wound reaction uh, only reacts when you actually wound him. So, I failed the wound, so there is no reaction. Now it's the monster's turn. Oh, I have to do four more damage. Come on. Uh, so, he's just going to sniff again. Awesome. So, he's just going to sniff. Awesome. Maul would really help this stupid lion. I hope this stupid lion remains to be stupid because he is just slaughtering us. Uh, that would be great if I could remove these two two cards here and then just have him maul again. So he's just sniffing. Um, sniff is normally bad if it's a level 3 lion, but that's okay. It's not a level 3 lion, so sniff is not that devastating. Alright, now we will attack with Liliana first from the same exact side. Two. Uh, one. Wound. I mean, I'm gonna draw this trap soon. I've gotta be. It's almost done. Okay, we will try to wound. Need a five to wound. Okay. So the reflex automatically is going to happen because it's just a reflex. Um, reflex happens no matter what. So there's some reflexes that happen on a wound, some that happen on a Failure to wound, but this reflex is happening no matter what. Full move the monster in a straight line. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, uh, wait, wait, one. Yeah, he should be back one. I don't know what I did there. Yeah, he should have been back one. Okay, so that cancels everything. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. That, I did not get any, couldn't do anything. Terrifying Roar. Great. Okay, first for Liliana. A one. A one. So, oh wait, she doesn't actually suffer anything. Result is two plus. Wait, a one is great. <laughs> I'm so used to being a one is just devastating. Okay, now for Sarah, or Laura, I mean. Five, uh, so she does suffer whatever with rolling brain trauma. And dead. Okay. Laura is dead. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Or, yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Let's draw the next AI card. Okay, random target, so no one's left but you. Let's go, Liliana. Um... I didn't actually have to move him. Okay. So the roar is going to cause Liliana, who has no more... Uh, she's going to suffer brain trauma. But she just got this absent seizures. I wonder if this takes effect. Nah, she's already suffered brain trauma once before to gain absent seizures. So I'm going to say it doesn't take effect. Seven on brain trauma is a lunacy gain a random disorder again and d5 insanity now i'm going to do the d5 insanity one this is just going so well let me just get that disorder maybe i'll become immortal or something wouldn't that just be great ah uh, that would just that would just be so great okay here we go it's another it's it's another Expansion disorder, which I didn't really want to even use. <sighs> so that's the spidicules, or yeah, spidicules, or spidiculies, I think, whatever. While you were the monster controller, double any damage you suffer. So she's monster controller, she's the last one left. Great, I'm so glad I drew that disorder. So she's just going to suffer double damage. Uh, pretty much damage is going to kill her anyway, but. <laughs> Okay, reshuffle the AI deck. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's do... And drop that dice, whatever. Oh, she got a hit. Okay. Beast's paw. re-roll. Man, that was a 9. That's also a 9. Okay. Uh, damn, I wish I was using Fist and Tooth, but I'm not. Founding Stone is what I'm using. It's a wound. I don't care. Wound. Alright. Monster's turn. Come on. Stupid card. Size up, it is. It's that stupid card. No, wait. So this one again where she's going to suffer brain trauma. <laughs> oh my gosh. Eight, she suffers brain trauma. One brain trauma. That Or no, insanity. One brain damage brings her down to zero insanity again. Ooh, whip. One, two, three, four, five. Behind him. Attack in the back. Uh, need a seven plus. Uh, those are sixes. Two failures. Great. What is the next card? Monster's turn. Maul. No one's knocked down. No one's anything. So he's just going to sniff. Which is great. He's being stupid. Awesome. It's her turn. One hit with the nine. Let's draw the hit location. Oh, no reaction. Miss, of course. Okay, miss. Monster's turn. Size up. Awesome, she's got no insanity left. That's a nine, so she will be suffering brain damage. Uh, one, so one on the brain trauma. Uh, she's dead. Okay. So that is the prologue lion that I have never lost to. So, that was terrible. Um, Alright. I uh, don't even have to go to the settlement phase. That is the end. So, looks like I will be starting over with a new settlement. But that is the prologue lion where someone loses. Amazing. 
So great. Was not wanting this to happen at all, but great. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let's start a new settlement.